We're continuing our look at the city of Haarlem in the Netherlands. In this episode, we're going to bring you in a couple of the really great museums, show you a few other smaller museums, and into the big church, the Grote Kerk, at the end of the show. In two other episodes about Haarlem, we've already taken you to the main market square and up and down the shopping streets and pedestrian lanes. This segment is dedicated to the museums. Coming up, we're going to walk you over to the Tyler Museum, which is the oldest in the country, with a variety of exhibits, including natural history, technology, and fine arts. But first, we'll start out with the Franz Hals Museum, one of the top attractions of Harlem. The museum is located in the old part of town in a building that dates back to 1609 and was originally a retirement home for single old men. Inside are works by many other Harlem artists of the 17th century. Several stately rooms saved from torn down houses have been partially reconstructed from other Harlem locations with period furniture and decor. Of course, the main attraction are the paintings, 16 of them, by Franz Hals, who lived most of his life in Harlem between 1616 and 1664, keeping very busy, creating many individual portraits and especially famous for the large group ensembles. In this principal room, it seems like you have entered a great banquet hall divided up in different tables. And as you walk in, it seems all the guests have turned around to look at you. There are groups of officers and administrators of the hospital life-size, some of them seated, with faces turned to the spectator as if posing for a photograph, some standing, all splendidly decorated. Halls was the master of showing emotional expression in faces. You really feel as if you know these people, as if you'd met them before. This truth of expression and the jovial character and the ample rich costumes of the 16th century make it seem like you're really looking at the Holland of 300 years ago, as if you're watching a historical play, not just an art gallery. The solo portraits are equally powerful as the groups. A new multimedia exhibit immerses you in nearly all of his paintings. The museum has a collection of over 750 works, most of them by artists from Harlem, and especially from the first half of the 17th century. They say that over 100,000 paintings were created in Harlem at that time and more work from that period has survived in Harlem than from any other Dutch city. A big painting by Peter Bruegel is accompanied by a fascinating multimedia kiosk that drills down and shows you the different parts of the painting in detail. The piece illustrates a hundred different proverbs such as don't count your chickens before they're hatched. You go back and forth from the painting to the touchscreen in this interactive method and decode the symbolism, such as, that's how the cards fall. The museum has an admirably varied collection, including some decorative arts and the genre paintings and sculpture. There's a little doll's house with the intricate rooms. So it's quite a great experience. The municipal art collection first got started back in the 1750s and was relocated to this building in 1913. Half a block away down the same street you'll find the Harlem Museum which is a display of the history of the city. It's a small museum so it's really quite easy to walk through it in 20 minutes and especially convenient if you have purchased the museum card. It only costs about 60 euro and it will admit you to nearly every museum in the country and it's good for a month. And with that card you wouldn't hesitate to go into a little museum like this history museum, which you might otherwise be reluctant to pay for. For example, that same card will get us into the Tyler Museum where we're going next, located along the Sparn River, quite close to the central square. Typical drawbridge, good for a scenic break on the bank. This row of old buildings along the waterfront leads us to the front entrance of the 
Tyler Museum with a Baroque facade in the Viennese style. It's a popular museum for families with a varied collection that goes well beyond just fine art. This is the oldest historical museum in the Netherlands and the interior retains that very old-fashioned feeling, like stepping back into 1778 when it was established. Right away upon entering the first room, you'll notice these display cases with that original feeling. The room is mostly fossils and bones of old creatures, including some remnants of early human and pre-human, and the first example ever found of the Archaeopteryx, a flying dinosaur. Next, we enter a room filled with a variety of scientific instruments, including what had been the world's largest electrostatic generator from the 18th century, old telescopes, microscopes, recording devices, telephones, whatnot. A small darkened room showcases luminescent minerals. Then we get to the most famous gallery in the museum. It's the Oval Room that dates back to its founding in the late 1700s with mineral displays in the center and all around it scientific instruments from the 18th century. The room is designed for research and study with scientific experiments conducted here and public demonstrations held in the upper level archives and a library. Then we enter a couple of rooms packed with pretty paintings and look at how they're stacked multiple levels high in the old fashioned way really fills the wall space with beautiful things to look at. The paintings are works from the Dutch Romantic School and the later Hague and Amsterdam schools and they're by major Dutch painters who you might not be familiar with but that's kind of liberating. You don't have to look at the label to see who painted what. Just enjoy the works in themselves. The painting galleries were added in the 19th century to round out the collection and make it into a temple for the muses of the arts and sciences based on revolutionary ideals derived from the enlightenment where people could discover and appreciate the complete world. A new wing was added to the museum in 1996 to handle special exhibits such as this display about the works of Jan Weissenbrook. Weissenbrook lived in the 19th century and his favorite subjects were the tranquil little towns where he painted his cityscapes with a sharpness in which every stone stood out. There's a tranquility here that gives his work a timeless quality. The new wing also houses a cafe looking out on the scenic garden courtyard. Well, now we're taking you a few blocks over to the center of town into the Archaeology Museum, located right on the Market Square. It's a small museum with just one room and display cases around it with artifacts from the history of Harlem. And they even have a little reconstruction of an archaeological dig with the pit in the ground and the shovels, buckets, and the wheelbarrow. For the kids, they have a sandbox to play in. And here too, it's like a little archeology span dig, scooping the dirt up with the trowel into the bucket. The archeology span museum is in the historic meat market located on the famous central market of town, the Grote Mark which is also the location of the huge Gothic church, the Grotta Kerk. This impressive church has been the heart of the city and its most important landmark for centuries. Located right in the middle of the market square, it was built in the Gothic style of architecture, originally as a Catholic church between 1370 and 1520 when it was finished. In 1559, it finally was officially named the Cathedral of the Diocese of Harlem, Amsterdam. But 20 years later, it was confiscated in the name of the Protestant Reformation, and it has been a Protestant church ever since. Its most famous feature is the huge organ that occupies nearly the entire west end of the building. The organ was the largest in the world when completed in 1738. It possesses four keyboards, 64 stops, and 5,000 pipes, the 
largest of those being 32 feet high and 15 inches wide. It's still played today in regular concerts. Many famous musicians played this organ, including Mendelssohn, Handel, and the 10-year-old Mozart who played it in 1766. The ceiling at the crossing is made of stone, but the rest of the roof is cedar wood, held up by 28 high stone columns and no flying buttresses. The church is 460 feet long in a Latin cross layout with a tower 262 feet high. The lower part of the church is of brick and the upper walls of stone. We didn't hear the big organ in our visit, but somebody was making beautiful music on the smaller organ. The model shows the overall design of the exterior. The interior of this church has changed little over the years and has been maintained in an accurate way, faithful to the original design. This brings our visit to Harlem to an end. We've been showing you the marketplace, the city streets, the museums in three different movies. Be sure to have a look for them in our travel series. You can see it's worth spending one or two nights in this city and we have a suggestion about a nice hotel for you. It's the place I stayed for my two nights in town, but this is not a paid plug. I never do that. Always an honest report. Welcome at Hotel Lion Door in Harlem, Holland. Uh, we are located close to the station here in Harlem and uh, we're right in the city center of Harlem so it's easy to go to the old medieval city and to the airport because we have the airport shuttle stopping right in front of the hotel here. Arriving by train carrying a suitcase is very easy because this four-star hotel is right in front of the station and just a 10-minute walk to get into the old town. At the end, I remind you that Harlem is only 15 minutes away from Amsterdam by train and well worth a visit. This is part of our series on the Netherlands in which we're taking you to many of the great cities of this beautiful country, including several more episodes about Harlem, with our main episode focusing on the lovely pedestrian and shopping streets of the city. We'll also take you to that big outdoor market filled with produce, cheese, clothing, and all sorts of great stuff. Stay tuned. We have many more movies in our travel collection covering Europe, the Americas, Asia, and other parts of the world.